Hey guys, Alec Pierce, Vintage Scuba, Weird Stuff 4. Yeah, uh, boy, have I ever, four or five? Four. four, I have lots of weird stuff. We could do weird stuff, what would it be like, Rocky? Seven, eight, nine, twelve. Anyway, uh, I have lots of weird stuff. A lot of this weird stuff is not necessarily weird. At the time, it wasn't weird. People say, oh, that's really neat, and we go out and buy it, and then we find out it either didn't work, or we hadn't had any use for it, or, or, or the company wanted a business, and so it became weird stuff because it disappeared. Uh, and some of it was developed into newer dive equipment that you're using today. But anyway, let's take a look at some of this weird stuff. We'll get rid of this first because it's big and heavy. This is just a dive light. It's just an ordinary dive light. The fact that it weighs nine pounds has nothing to do with the fact it's just a dive light. Aluminum housing, made by Mare's, big company, glass face, cheap little, what was that bulb? It was a number six or something, six volt bulb in there that threw out a better than a candle flame. But not as good as a big lighter. And big heavy sheet metal. Just a big heavy uh, uh, example of a, of a dive light from many, many years ago. They don't make them like this anymore, which is a good thing. It's heavy, it's big, it's bulky. Took a lot of maintenance because of the big batteries in there. But it's a beautiful old light from probably the late 60s, early 70s, Mare's, and, and in great, uh, great shape. I've already sold that to a good friend of mine uh, from the Scuba Museum. Anyway, I'll put that out of the way. Let's take a look at some other weird stuff here. What do we got? Let's take this out of the way first, too. This, this was around for a number of years, and we, I had one, and it worked most of the time. This was called the personal dive sonar. Yeah. So, let me see. It was kind of neat because here's the theory anyway, and it worked reasonably well. If you put your battery, 9-volt battery in it, right, has a digital readout right here, right here. And the digital readout would tell you how many feet or meters away the next dense object was okay so if you were on the boat and you wanted to know how deep the water was you would put this over the, it had to be in the water put this over the edge press the button hold it for a second and 97 feet is that simple suppose you were diving and you were swimming along and, oh where's my buddy ah, darn it well what you could do is you could push this down like that and go like this and beep oh there he is, 47 feet that way. That was the theory. Didn't always work really well with divers. Uh, might work with a diver like Kevin, but uh, not with all divers necessarily. <laughs> In theory, anyway, you could do the opposite. In theory, you could look up from the bottom and let the surface hold the button and you could read the distance to the surface. That didn't always work very well. Anyway, it's a dive sonar, which would detect the distance, measure the distance to the uh, sent out a beam, measure the distance to the next uh, different density, uh, preferably denser, but not always necessarily denser. I'm going to put that out of the way as well because we got a number of things to look at. Okay, let's look at uh, let's look at this. This is kind of neat. Now I actually spoke about this, but it came up again the other day on one of the dive sites. People couldn't believe it actually existed, but it actually does exist. I have a can of it, and uh, several old old divers like myself remember this stuff. And, and uh, it's just one of those weird things that came out years and years ago. It's good that it's gone, but it came out, and it's part of weird stuff, vintage scuba weird stuff. This is called Cold Guard. Now, some of you divers have complained about getting cold. Uh, you go to your local dive store, and you get yourself a little tub of Cold Guard. And you open the tub up, and inside is this yellowish-green, pukey-looking stuff inside. It's kind of like noxema and you take your fingers and you rub it all over your body you see you rub it all over your body anywhere you want and then you climb into your wetsuit and this cold guard would help to keep you warm it had a number of different chemicals in it uh, it's it's a little difficult to, they don't list the chemicals on the bottle this was not made yesterday where everything has to be listed no 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 <laughs> not listed on here and the chemicals there were a variety of chemicals in here a variety of things and some of them might actually technically scientifically uh, help to protect you from the cold i don't know exactly but there was one chemical in particular in here that was put in perfectly logical because uh, uh, asbestos actually does help keep you warm that's right, it had asbestos in it. Uh, not necessarily the reason it's no longer available, but I'm sure it's right up there in the, in the list of reasons why it's not available. Cold guard, rub it on your body to keep you warm when you're scuba diving, and it's sold by a well-known scuba company. I won't mention the name, you might recognize the letter on there. It's gone now, part of vintage scuba. Now, I wanna show you these, because these are neat. I've shown you a couple of these before, 
and, uh, and, and they were a big, big part of scuba diving at one time. These are inflatable boys. That's uh, B-O-U-I-S, by the way, not B-O-Y-S. And uh, they, were, they were called lifeguard. The, several companies made them. The most common company was Swimmaster, and uh, they called theirs the lifeguard. And it's a rubber inflatable like a balloon. And you could attach this to something. This theoretically would go around your waist, so you could blow this up, and it would hold you up on the surface. Hence the name lifeguard. And they came with the little little cartridges, two little lifeguard cartridges. They're actually the proper lifeguard cart. These cartridges were, were just little CO2 cartridges. There were two styles. This style had a flat end on it, and it was just pierced when you pulled the lever on that. It just pierced the end, and the little ball blew up. Oh, it was about the size of a grapefruit, maybe a little bigger than a grapefruit. Lots of buoyancy. It wasn't very big, but lots of buoyancy. And boy, that would haul you to the surface or pick up something off the bottom, probably weighing 100 pounds and take it to the surface. It was pretty good. Mike Nelson in Sea Hunt used to use these a great deal. Whenever he found something on the bottom, he would take out one of his lifeguards and, and let the line go. And it was pretty exciting when I was 10 years old watching Mike Nelson. They had two different types of cartridges. This one, you can still find. This is a type that's used in current uh, at, if you go to a bar supply store, a place that gives you bar supplies, these are used in, uh, in Fitzers. I think they're called Fitzers, you know, make for making soda water. goes in the top, you squeeze a lever, and it fills the water with soda water. The other style, <clears throat> this style, is no longer available. These are very hard to find. I know that vintage scuba collectors, if any of you are watching out there, I have quite a few of these original in boxes if you need some. These are a little bit different, similar type of cartridge, but these have a pin on the end. And uh, these are not available. The pin is pushed in, and that releases the gas. Uh, these are not available anymore. They haven't been for a long time, but I have quite a few of those. There's another one. This is a little bit different. Same type of thing. Certi Swim Master certified reloader cartridges. Yep. And another one here. You pull the mechanism and the rubber thing. This is like Mike Nelson's. Up it goes. A lot of companies made these. Here's one made. Uh, this was actually made by Swim Master. It's called the Diver's Boy. And this was kind of neat when it blew up. It was a red and white diver's flag. You see. So this is obviously a little bit later. Uh, scuba diver's flag wasn't around until the 60s. Another one there. This is another big full-size lifeguard. Double cartridge. And this one. In each end. That would hold up a lot of weight. Decor. And Decor was around up until the 90s almost. Decor had one. I mean, these were very, very popular. There's another one from Decor still. Brand spank a new in the bag. Never been so. All of these materials I'll be selling sometime fairly soon. Uh, my vintage collection is big and it's old and it's odd. And I'm slowly but surely getting rid of all of this stuff. I have one more item sitting here. And, and I, I have to take a minute with this and tease Kevin because I've been teasing Kevin. I asked him if he knows what it is. He had no idea what it is. I showed him how it works. And he still couldn't guess. All right, anyway, let me show you how it works. If you have a scuba tank, oh dear, get this up here. I might stay there safely. I'm not too sure, Kevin. Is that solid? And you want to protect your scuba tank in the back of the car or on the dive boat, then you would put this on the top of the scuba tank. It fit down snugly on top of the valve, and if the tank rolled around, it didn't hurt the valve. Try to buy one of these today. No, <laughs> they don't make them. But it was not a bad idea. And you can see that it accommodated the old J valve, the old double valve, and it banged down there pretty solidly on there, too. Did a pretty good job of protecting your tank. Right? That's what that is. Weird stuff. Weird stuff. Oh, weird stuff. Yeah, it goes on there. Well, weird stuff from the old days of scuba. Yeah, pretty neat. Once again, just to accommodate uh, those couple of people who asked about the, the weird stuff that I collect. If you watch around my house, you see all kinds of weird stuff. I have another weird thing over here. This is a, this is a genuine <clears throat> whale oil lamp. Whale oil, made of brass. And I guess you could use any kind of oil in it. It's a whale oil lamp. And you take the little chicken, unscrew the little chicken. And you would fill this tub with oil, whale oil or kerosene, you see. And there's a wick here. And then you put the chicken back in. The chicken is just there, rooster. It's just there to keep the hole full. And this would hang on a boat or in your house or something. It's on, a, it's on a bit of a gimbal. And once the wick got wet, you light it and you have a little lantern. That's all it is. It's just a kind of a cute little thing. I've never seen one before. Maybe you haven't. I can't be entirely sure how old it is. This could be a reproduction. It looks like it's extremely old, which means it's probably a reproduction. It's kind of a neat little thing, a whale oil lamp. Hang that up. Maybe I'll find a use for it sometime.
Vintage scuba, some more weird stuff. I got lots more. Keep an eye on things. Keep your comments coming because your comments really help Kevin and I to decide what to show and what to talk about. Thanks, guys. Alec Pierce, Vintage Scuba. See you again soon.